What's poppin' yo, this is Dr. Green Thumb, AKA Be Real for Be Real TV. We're about to jump in the smoke box with one of my longtime homies, one of my brothers, so assassin style, Mr. Cartoon. His name is huge in the art world, in the ink world, in the low rider world, in the hip hop culture. Um, he's inked some of the biggest names you can think of in music and in entertainment and sports, all that. We're gonna jump in the box with him and my man Estevan Oriol, who you also might know from many videos he's put out there with so many um, artists from hip hop to different genres um, and his photography. Some of the most legendary shots and iconic shots in hip hop culture and LA lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna jump in the box and uh, chop it up with my bros. So, let's jump in the box. Welcome to another edition of the Smoke Box. I'm Be Real, AKA Dr. Green Thumb. And in this box, I got none other than Mr. Cartoon, yeah. Stevon Oreo. My boy. Two of my, you know, brothers, if yeah. you will, uh, representing the Soul Assassin family mm -hmm. going back over 20, well over 20 years, well over 25 yep. years even, probably 28. Yep. Right? Close to that. It's crazy. We've, we've uh, toured the world together. We started um, a clothing line together in Joker brand clothing, the three of us. We also have E Zone in the car. Hello, E Zone. Very good. That's right. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and the branch of the Soul Assassin family was able to extend out because of a lot of the stuff that you and Esteban have been able to do outside the music. Like you with the art and the tattoo, you with the videos and the photography and the books and the documentaries that you guys are working on. I mean, you guys influenced a lot of shit. I mean, from the time that we all we started this little, mm -hmm. you know, the movement. I mean, did you see it branching out the way that it did? Never. I mean, when we started coming up, you know, Stevan kind of took me under his wing and brought me around. Really, the whole touring and, and, and backstage life. You know what I'm saying? I I seen a peak of it working with Easy E, but I'd never really travel the country like that so it was important for us to live up to our end you know what I'm saying so you know I could draw of course I couldn't rap so I was like let me cover this art area and then Stevan did the, the visuals you know the videos and documenting it so we just wanted to kind of hold up our end and um, you know we were just grateful to be in it and it was really all about West Coast hip hop, you know, and she's that. Like keeping those those elements alive from graph to now tattooing is one of the elements, you know, and yeah. And, 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 I, and, I and think DJing. You, are, you were a part of making it one of the elements because before, you know, tattoo tattooing and ink was, was uh, separated. Separated. And, you know, when you started you were in, in the airbrush, you know, mm -hmm. part of it. And I remember when you were transitioning into doing the ink, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, you went a different route than most tattoo artists, like the apprenticeship and mm -hmm. being a part of somebody's shop. And I know that you got a lot of flack for it, but like you carved your own lane by doing your own thing. And, and that's something that you, I think you influenced a lot of others after you to do that. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, you everyone watches somebody, right? Right. So Stevan was like, Hey, trip out, hum B does this interview. We'd be at Cam Yell or Hot 97 or something, and we would watch you do interviews. And so we learned how to do media training. We were getting right. our media training watching you and Mugs right. and Send Dog be natural, be fucking funny and shit, and, and be able to explain your art. Right. So we learned off that shit, and Stevan was like, a fool, you need to go to Japan and do like a tattoo tour the same way that Cypress right. tours. Put snipes up, do radio interviews, treat it like you're an artist like them. And that's what we did. We mimicked you guys and 
you survived the Cypress Hill tours and shit, you know? After I got done with those tours, I waved a white flag for about 13 years. Yeah. I had to pause, you know what I'm saying? 13 years? It was 13, like, man. It was some party, party years. We partied the fuck up. And for a lot of people that don't know, it's Stevan Oriel in the backseat, mm -hmm. legendary photographer. That's and, right. You know, a filmmaker and, you know, video maker. Mm -hmm. You know, he. Uh, for those that don't know, he was... You know, with with Cypress Hill for what about 16, 16 years or so? Working. Uh, yeah, working, but with us longer, obviously, like yeah. twenty some odd years. My first time on the Ave was in 1989 on yeah. Cypress Ave. That's mm -hmm. right. I went over there and chill with you guys, and that uh, the first time I worked with you guys was in '94. That's right. But I went to New York for the release of the Cypress album in '91. And started working with Muggs, hooked me up with a job with, with uh, House of Pain in 92, so I tour managed uh, House of Pain 92, 93, 94, and then uh, Woodstock came along and you guys were like, hey, we need a road manager, and I wasn't on the road, and they said, you want to, uh, you know, try out for the job rolling with the big boys over here, and I said, hell yeah, so I flew in on a helicopter, me and Bobo, he came off of the Beastie Boys tour, and we went with Jefferson Airplane and flew into Crazy. the backstage of the Woodstock and that was my first day on the job. That was the first Hill. day on the job and uh, you know if people look closely on the Woodstock footage you could see Esteban Oriol in the motherfucking shots along with Gator, Snow, Capper, yeah. which were some of our tight circle homies at the time. Now if there is any one photographer that, or, or a videographer that has um, <clears throat> extensive footage of Cypress Hill, you know, with backstage or live footage or on the fucking spot shit because Estevan was also our DJ for mm -hmm. a time, as we know. DJ Scandalous. And he got everything. This guy's like the fucking Cypress Hill archive, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and But to go from that, right, because, I mean, all we were doing was touring at that time. And you guys, like, after a while, you guys focused in on what the strengths were. You, 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 you left alone the tour and you went and focused on inking people, putting your brand on people, your style of shit, and you as well. You know, you went into like, I'm gonna take this, this artist's vision and, you know, bring it out into a video and make it pop. And you started doing videos from there. What, what was the transition like, like jumping off the road and like going into that? And, for me, it was, it was like kind of, uh, it was like a, a survival thing, you know, because at that time, you know, us being Cypress Hill weren't really touring that much. And I only got paid when I was on tour. So for me, it was like a, you know, a challenging moment in my life. And I had to be like, well, fuck, we're not touring that much. I'm not making that much money. I'm, I'm not going to go get a job somewhere. And I'm not going to go on tour with another band like other tour managers did because most tour managers toured with a different band every tour. Right. And I toured with the same band for 10 years. And before that, uh, House of Pain, I toured with them for three years. And the only other bands I toured with just for fun was um, Candlebox. Uh, Guy Siri hooked me up with tour managing Proper Grounds. Guy Siri, shout out to Guy Siri. And uh, I did a Proper Grounds with Danzig, and then mm -hmm. I did a Candlebox tour. And those were the only two bands I cheated on my <laughs> Soul Assassin's <laughs> brothers with. And uh, but you know it was all the same crew, you know L.A. and um, you know it, it was fun. But at at the point when I had to make the decision of do I wait around for us to tour again, or do I just, you know, make that decision now and go into photography and videos? You know, I had to do it. I had to, uh, it was in 2005, and yeah. I did my first video in 97, and by the time the 2000s came around, I probably had like 15 videos under my belt, and I had a good uh, 10, album covers and a shitload of magazine work so I had already had like a little bit of establishment and around 2005 I just said you know I'm gonna go do my thing and, and uh, I had to jump in head first and 
you know, me and Cartoon just went out there smashing. We, we came up with SA Studios, which was, of course, Soul Assassin Studios, or, you know, we didn't want to scare somebody, we called it Starving Artist right. Studio. And, yeah. uh, you know, because people get weird sometimes when you say Soul Assassin, they get all fucking freaked out. They like, get intimidated. Yeah, they get, get intimidated. Like it's an shit. intimidating name. You, we Especially all know, we've all known this because we've repped it yeah. for so long. But yeah. in Japan, it translates real scary too. Yeah, I would it's like imagine. murder your soul and yeah. shit. I got a tattooed yeah. on me, so it, yeah. when, the, when yeah. Japanese yeah. people read that shit, they're they kind of like, on that shit. like yeah, they freak yeah, out. it's a little yeah. harder even in Japanese. I mean, what about you? You know, because you went straight to the chair and you had a fucking list that still <laughs> motherfuckers are waiting on to this day. Well, it, it, <laughs> it's crazy. You know, step, we used to go on tour with you guys, and then we'd be backstage for eight hours waiting for you guys to go on at the end and Stefan goes you know what every other time you come on tour you gotta bring your tattoo shit with you we're just sitting here everyone's gonna get tattooed if you got your shit the machine's working so that's how we really ended up tattooing Eminem um, 50 yeah. Cent OB tries 50 the anger management you know, was exhibit too right exhibit like we were all just hanging out right there and Stefan would walk up to people and be like Hey, that's a badass tattoo. You have room for Cartoon to do one. And they'd be like, who's Cartoon? He'd be like, oh, that's my boy. He just did this. And so he would go on tour with you guys yeah. and be promoting me to the Fugees or to Nas or to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The people he'd run into being backstage for eight hours. Who was the most difficult motherfucker to do, it, do one for? <clears throat> Probably Kanye West. Kanye? Yeah, He's an artistic, that, that, crazy, you know. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. But uh, he, he, I tattooed him two times, mm. so it must have, you know. Um, he must have liked the work. Came, you know, back <laughs> again, back. you know. We had a bunch of the homies right there, you know. They they might, when they walk in there, get a little bit, you know, on edge. Yeah, oh. but we're there to protect them. You're not going to let nothing happen to them, you know. We were running a business, but... Uh, yeah, you get art. It's hard to tattoo artists. Yeah, because artists are usually have yeah. a vision of their own. Yeah, they have their own vision. Yeah. especially somebody like that. They do their own tattoos if they could. Yeah, but tattooing celebrities like you guys were the first platinum artists I tattooed. So after that, that was a jumping board to be able to tackle these other people. So like, when Pharrell would come into town, Steph would be like, "Hey, fool, Pharrell's here. You should go pick him up. Don't let that motherfucker." take a taxi to your car service, go pick them up. And I, I would go pick them up at the hotel and be like, get in, fool, you know? Yeah. You know? So it wasn't unlike us to do that, to be aggressive and go and get, you know, these names. And that's where you get a little press. So when they would, you know, talk to us about doing your album cover, we had to have other things to talk about that yeah. we were doing, you know? But hey, I found some sketches the other day was, the the Buddha, the big yeah. Buddha design. Yeah. Those were all pencil sketched that we sent to the balloon company. Yeah. To make that did the, the blow the ups, you know, the king Buddha, on the yeah. on the throne and just a bunch of original that's, sketches, that's, man. That's, that's the shit right there. You know, because they made a fucking good rendering of that. Yeah, they did their yeah. the seat blown up yeah. on the stage and yeah, that Muggs shit was, was crazy. excellent at concepts. Like, he would go and get a bunch of... What people might not know, they look at one of your album covers, and those are actually little toys, little statues, and, and complex uh, hand-done shit from Hollywood to make all these skeletons sit at a table and have a round table. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those, it's actually a miniature creation, you know, of art. And then it's photographed. Yeah. So I think a lot of people didn't even know what was behind the scenes and how deep... One time I got a piece of metal and uh, candied it and drew the skull on it. And then Stefan took a picture of it. No, Stone Raiders. Stone Raiders That's album covers cool. actually candy like this car with flake and, yeah. and pearls and all that shit. You know, there's the, there's a few things, you know, people always bring up when, they, when Cartoon's name comes up. One is the fucking collaboration with Nikes. You're probably the first artist to have a collaboration with Nike. And uh, the ice cream truck, yes, sir. obviously, is a masterpiece. And, and your name is synonymous with putting the first yeah. of its kind together. 
right? And you remember those times? When oh we yeah, I saw, that I saw it there from from the the beginning. And the third thing is when you did the Dr. Green Thumb Car. Yeah, because that shit is sick. That was my dedication. I mean, to all Cyprus, of them. you know. Yeah, that was dedication to the tour times, to to the Green Thumb, to the Buddha Master. It's a whole car was done in candy greens. That car ended up being in a movie called Lowriders. And uh, so now it's like, it's still with us, you know? One of our boys in, in the crew, you know, has it. And it's like my painting. It just yeah. happens you can dip it. Yeah. But it's really my painting of my memories. And it was like a bank robber. Dr. Greenthum robbed the bank. And, and Sen's running out there. He's got his cap on. And then Muggs is in the fucking sky and shiz the fucking, you know, and evil it, dictator warlord. <laughs> and it's crazy that, you know, because we're all connected to, to the birth of that character and that brand, mm. yep. Dr. Green Thumb, because you did the artwork for it. Storyboarded the video you and then the, he video did the video for it. Yeah. And, you know, I obviously. We created you were the, the star of it. Yeah, well, and those puppets were fucking too much. Yeah, those are the originals from uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Do you still got the puppets? No. No. They, went, a, they went back to the rental company. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the museum. I had to auction those off. I was just bad. Yeah, man. No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> hey, but this is what, what do you call this thing? The smoke box? Yeah, the smoke box. Mm. So just for all you guys that don't, <laughs> haven't noticed, I'm not smoking. I'm over here trying to get a contact high at least, but these guys ain't smoking enough. Damn. You know, so can see the window and all that shit, so you guys need to get to puffing, man. I don't so, think you can see on camera how smoky it is in here. It's not, though. That's what I'm saying. You guys need to smoke some more. Hit the uh, motherfucking joint. I'm trying to get a contact high here at least. We might have to step least. it up. Damn. Yeah. Like, where's the, the uh, bongs and the dabs and all that? One of these days, <laughs> motherfucker needs to smoke a P dog in this motherfucker. That ain't never happened. <laughs> yeah, dog. then we'll really think we're driving, dog. We might turn it on and fucking roll through the wall by accident. Oh, Dipping in some sherm or something. <laughs> oh, the tip came out here. I'll yeah. trade you. Oh, there we go. You'll be able to fix that, bit. Yeah, I'll fix there that real go. quick. Word up, man. It's, it's so, so much cleaner smoking with these tips. Oh, oh, yeah. You can hold it, hitting all them. Mine's been a little bit of a straight shooter, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I those were the nineties. I could see where that happens, Doc. The so, 90s are hot right now. So what's what's so what's the next shit you got planned? Because you always got something different going on. For sure, we got a couple things jumping off for the future. We got a collab with Vans coming out. So Vans, a lot of Vans fans. For sure. Grew up in uh, wearing Vans, man, and to be able to actually design this shit is surreal. Um, I'll never take it for granted. I get hyped on every project we do. I'm doing the um, Mayans TV show. Like, oh, no shit, the, 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 the spin-off, yeah. The spin-off from Sons of Anarchy. Shout out to Emilio Rivera. Um, you know, I did like the poster, the logo. I do the stuff that you're gonna see on the bus benches and the marketing of it. So that shit's always fun and it's hand done and kind of like doing an album cover, you know? and People, it seems like a lot of that's disappearing, but at the same time, vinyl's coming back. People are like loving album covers again, you know? Yeah. You guys always had the best album covers. Well, shit, that's, you know, in part to you too, bro. You put, you put down <coughs> some nice work on that shit, you know? And Dante, you know? Dante. We yeah. had a great team to, yeah. to put some shit together. They, they saw the vision. And, and what about you, Esteban? What do you got coming up next, brother? Maybe you guys finally got it smoked up and up in here. To Getting to your second hand me. jump off? Yeah, like now I can be a little unfocused. But, uh, <laughs> I would say uh, I got three books coming out this year. One is called This is Los Angeles. The next one is called um, Ruka Aloha that I've been doing with Ruka. Mm. Going to the Pipeline Masters, shooting there like 20 top skaters, top surfers, top fighters and artists. Uh, over there on the North Shore for like six years, so that's gonna be crazy. That book coming, and then uh, went on Gumball 3000 that I've been working on for and, 10 years. And you've been doing that for a long time. Mm. This is the 10th year, which is their 20th year anniversary, so mm. it's close from London to Japan. 
got a, we probably, we might get mugs back in there, but for sure Bun B and me and uh, mugs is one car. And then there's other, you know, 100 cars or whatever. Yeah, no was. exhibit does that now and then too. Yeah. Where's Send Dog at? Shouldn't he be sitting in here? <laughs> he I'll sit he in the gonna, middle so Send Dog can sit right here. He's in the gym somewhere, often, Doc. He's at the gym with Noe. He might be on that Harley. Girls and shit. Oh, girls. Yeah. So, you know, always one of the last questions is one of the last two questions is what, what, what are you, you know, chiefing on these days? What's your favorite shit you like to smoke on right now? Well, I always get, when I order an ounce of weed, I get half Kush, half Sativa. Nice. Which so, the, which sativa? Blue Dream have been my favorite, just because it remind me know, of the you old. Just made his know. Day. You just made his. What do you day, know, be real? Such I a mean, talented man enjoys a Blue Dream. I heard that most artists <laughs> like Blue Dream. It's weird. I mean, they say that's all that Juicy, Juicy J smokes, is a Blue Dream. It, it, it could be possible. It but could be possible. I think it just reminds me of that old, like Hawaiian weed. Or at least I thought it was Hawaiian, and they told yeah. me it was Hawaiian. Back then, we only had four names. Yeah. You had Indo, Pretendo, and you had, um, yeah, and then yeah. Would you, these true. kids will never know is this shit used to get dry. Dry. For, I mean, you never went dry, but we went dry, and that shit was fucked up. No, and even I'd have now, to go into now, South Central to go cop that shit. Even now and then, I would go dry too at the time because I mean, you know, cultivation ain't what it is now. I mean, it's fucking crazy now. You cannot run out now. No, there's no such there's thing. Almost too much. You can go anywhere and fucking get it now. It's crazy. It's awesome shit. We live in the best times, man. That's why I started smoking again. I stopped for me and Stevan. We had a contest at the beginning to see if we could not smoke for a year. And, and it, it went for 13 yeah. years or something, right? Right. It turned into a yeah. decade, and then we were like, hey, Holmes, 13, that number has a ring to it, man. That's our lucky number. So we went to 13, and then we were in Thailand, and we were like sitting in this crazy infinity pool with all our friends. On, and I looked at E, and I was like, man, I feel like smoking weed again, homie, and having a fucking corona. And he looked at me, and he goes, me too. <laughs> he goes, hey, Holmes, he goes, I wanted to tell you that shit. He goes, but I didn't want you to cut me off, you know? But after that, we set a tripod up. We put the camera. We said, this is 13 years. Rolled a nice fucking lanyard up with the fire. And Damn, I let that, that shit. First, first joint back in. I felt like I was uh, driving a waterbed <laughs> down the boulevard. <laughs> I felt great, man. I didn't feel paranoid. I felt relaxed. I felt a, a sense of weight lifted off my shoulders, almost like a unspiritual awakening. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. And, and it uh, it felt dope, man. And I'm, just, you know, I do use it for meditation. Uh, I use it for uh, it's a positive thing, and I still keep thinking they're gonna make it illegal again. Like if the powers be that up there, they're gonna try to say, okay, that's enough. You know? And I was like. I'm trying to get all the butt I can. I think they they seen how much money is made in this shit now. I don't think it's going nowhere now. I think it's the 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 race is on to how to tax every part of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It just seems too good to be true, dog. It does, but it's here. It's a great time to yeah. to be alive. Is what oh, I'm yeah. saying. Hey, I want to thank you guys for coming yeah. into the box. You know what I'm saying? Big B. Let them know where they can find you at. Mm -hmm. That's right. MrCartoon.com, Mr. Spelled Out. Check us out on the IG, on the website. What's your IG though? It's different, no? Mr. C Tunes. There you, go. you just put Mr. Cartoon. Look for the blue check. That'll <laughs> be the, me. Look for the blue check. That's right. I got some crazy imposters. I've even had like crazy uh, stalker come up to you and take a picture and say, that he was yeah, I think he even called you at one point for a, a shoe deal or some shit. I apologize, man. My stalkers, they're not a fucking hot, you know, stripper or nothing like that. It's some fucking weirdo trying to, you know, take the, be the kid, man. I guess that just comes along with getting, like, free rims and shoes and shit, you know? It does, man. How about you, Esteban? Where could they find you, brother? Oh, I made it easy for everybody. It's at EstebanOreo.com. Or Esteban Oreo with the blue check on Instagram. You can see some of my latest, greatest, and some of the oldies but goodies there. Right now, the 90s is hot, so I'm posting mm. 90s shit. And, uh, 
We survived the 90s, homes. Yeah, we did. 90s is back. Still going strong. Yeah. Word up, man. This has been another smoke box. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Fuck with my people, Mr. Yeah. Cartoon, and it's Devon Oreo. That's right. And we'll be back with more. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. Got the heart of a light, soul of a titan, mind of a genius. Fly with the height, all your senses are senseless, resistant, relentless. It's what they call you when your grind is endless. Let's get this. They say I'm psycho, I move weight like lipo. Got a big crib like Michael, out the window with a rifle. My wrist game on light show. I'm backstage with white hoes. I got pre rolls in that red cup. That's key line, don't like those. Got a full pack and we move that. Too aggressive, better pull back. Weight heavy, gotta run ready. My game steady, but you knew that. I'm too on and my crew strong. Big burn, my clips long. We take dabs and hit bombs. Grab a check, get gone. Ooh, welcome to the smoke box.